first of all, thank you very much, especially to Julia, to have invited me to, for, to do this talk. Uh, it's, it's an honor, and I've been working on this for quite some time since I was invited to, to be part of the nomination committee of the What's um, Free Software Quality Award. That's that's a new name, so I updated my presentation in that uh, in that direction as well. And uh, it's an honor to be here to present you the how you can what, what are the rules and how we can you submit to your work, uh, nominate other people or nominate yourselves to, to this prize. And by the way, I just noticed Jim Kelly is on, on the call. <laughs> I hope you are good. So um, you already had the chance to, to, to read a little bit of mo about me and know about me, but uh, what I really want to share with you here is how am I connected to these to these awards? So how how I got here, uh, and it was really actually uh, the, the, the 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 being part of the appraisal team for the for the maturity level five the portal uh, for critical software that uh, pushed me in the direction of doing a PhD. At the time, there were a lot of, of information coming from the Software Engineering Institute for people to understand high maturity. And we ourselves were, were quite struggling to understand how could we do it, how should we do it. Uh, and the, the most hard part, I think, it was uh, how can we build this these models that uh, that can tell us the future, and and one day I was caught uh, doing my my normal work, and uh, after a, a Six Sigma and TSP uh, training, I was doing my models to predict predict something, and people told me, "Oh, you're doing maturity level five, and you never told us," and I thought I wasn't ready for 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 answering all the questions that I had about how companies were not being able to succeed and have the, the, the results that, that uh, CMMI uh, is supposed to give you and what was going on with these certifications and how could we do good implementations. And that's why I decided to, to pursue a PhD and met, uh, had the honor to meet a lot of the, the SEI people at the SEPG in Portugal in, in 2010, uh, made loads of questions. Uh, <laughs> I'm always questioning about everything, and, and you may, may say that as well. Um, and I, I started to, to do research with the, with, the, with the Software Engineering Institute. It was an honor. Um, they had to approve my, 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 my proposal, my research proposal, which, which was not easy, I may say. It was a, a uh, such a rewarding challenge and having you know overcame uh, overcome all the challenges that the SEI gave me and my PhD gave me uh, was incredible it was an incredible journey because I not only did the answer to the question why but I also worked on quality quality uh, um, information and did case studies and, and did a uh, uh, the, the qualitative analysis of, 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 of surveys. And I ended up in, in 2014, I was ready to deliver my, my PhD and I received the data from the Software Engineering Institute based on team software process to finalize my, my, my research with actual models. So I was very happy and spent two more years doing my research. Uh, so, but let's focus on the prize, okay? Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about. I'm sorry. I wanted to point out that you're not sharing your slides. If if that if you I'm want not. to be doing that. Oh my God! How, how can I? Not a problem. Oh, thank you for warning me. Let me see what did I do wrong here. Mm. And I'm happy to share them if you'd like me to. I, um, I think I can, but I just need to to make this bigger and share screen. Okay, let's try this again. Share. Now, are you seeing it? Yes, perfect. Thank you. See what? Okay. I appreciate David because I, I couldn't notice. I could do the entire presentation without slides. <laughs> 
okay, so he, this is where this is where I, I gave you the introduction. This is where I told you about my relationship with the award, so people could take a look at my 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 background. But but I think uh, Juliet already did uh, such a great work. It's not there's no need to come back here. And now I'm going to give you the agenda. I'm going to give you an introduction uh, introduction to talk about uh, what's Humphrey and and the award itself. Um, then we're going to talk about how the, the nominations work, uh, the important dates, so all the schedule that you need to, to take, um, pay attention to. And uh, at the closure, I would like to talk a little bit about the previous winner and, and give you some awareness about previous winners as well, so you can get a better picture about this, this award. So let's continue. Um, this picture that I chose is when uh, Humphrey was uh, receiving a, a, one of the highest or honors given in, in the US by the president of the United States of America, uh, the Leading Innovators Award. And that was back in 2005. And it is such a, a, a meaningful picture. I, I really did write about this picture at, a, at a, an occasion because it really shows how humble and how important this person was to, to, to the software engineering society. Um, to give you some awareness, and most of you may know Humphrey even better than I do probably, um, it all began working, so Humphrey began his work on hardware, not, not on software, and uh, and uh, he did a transition afterwards. He was already a manager, and he was concerned that when you are managing people, you, you, do not, you don't have to know everything, because people know what they are doing. So what you have to do is question, and question a lot, to understand how they are doing things, why they are doing things in some way, and that that's what we do when we are doing process improvements, right? We don't, it doesn't have to be our, our area of, of work. We don't have to have done it before, but to be able to manage that kind of work, we need to be curious and get involved with people. And Humphrey did that very well. You worked in, in at IBM for, for a long time, like around 30 years, and then you joined the software engineering Institute. So it's it's such a big career. Um, he also gave computer classes when the uh, software classes when 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 he was still working on hardware and he didn't know much about software and I was invited to do that. So so it's really a remarkable person in, in what he did. And that's why he is known as the father of software quality. Um, and I think um, he not only addressed uh, a software development issues, he addressed management issues and gave us some, some interesting lessons. And from what you were saying about the, the, at the beginning of the talk, that you were talking about the uh, framework of personal uh, process uh, for, for instead of team software process, um, that's actually something that I find to um, some I find it very important to and and wrote about it uh, at some points as well uh, in another context just to say, because I was doing it in my at my job when I was not developing software and decided it was applicable to everything and I did an example with uh, with a revision of, of, of papers so he's a great person. Uh, and a humble man. And he was able to identify best practices for software engineering. He laid out the ground for CMM and CMMI. He created in some sort of way, PSP have uh, worked with Jim over to evolve, to, to evolve it. Uh, he was working on TSP as well. He wrote around 60 computer programs to show that CMMI could be done uh, in, 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 in all maturity levels while creating TSP. Um, furthermore, he received lots of honors that, that are very well deserved, like being an SCI fellow, ACM fellow, um, got an a honorary doctorate. Uh, he, he, he 
was part of many, many uh, publications and journals. He did he published many books. You have to the 12 publications mentioned here. So he gave a great contribution for, for the society. And it was not necessary for him to leave us to start being uh, recognized at a different level. And the, this award that we are talking about was created in 1994 and is given by the IEEE Computer Society and Software Engineering Institute. And this is for outstanding achievements in improving ability to create and evolve high quality software dependent systems. And this is quite remarkable. So, as I was telling you in the beginning, I was uh, I was invited to be member of the of the voting committee, which is quite an honor, um, and I'm very happy that the Software Engineering Institute remembered my name. Um, and this year, uh, the the mindset for for doing this was um, the need that this prize is not only concealed concealed to the USA uh, population. It's a prize that should be given to anywhere, to anyone in any part of the world. And with this mindset, people were invited from other countries like uh, Pat Kirben was coming from, was invited from, the, from, from Germany. I was invited from Portugal. There's, there are people invited from South Africa, uh, people from Mexico, people from, from many other places uh, that can give us a distribution of, of people um, as voting members and helping other people do the submissions in order to, 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 to make the world, the world this award available to the world for them to, to be able to submit as well. So we are here to ask for support nomination, clarify about the award, help people do the submissions when they have questions. Um, and then there will be a time where we will be evaluating the work that people done on each submission, help interview uh, the award finalists and draft uh, the review award uh, recommendation report. So the as Computer Software Society uh, member and the Software Engineering Institute member may be able to, to then uh, decide who shall be the winner or the winners. There was a year that there were two winners of this award. So what what is what are the criteria that are involved here uh, it, it this this means that this award has to have an impact and and it, it's not trivial so you do the the, the process improvement uh, software process improvement and you're concerned with with uh, with quality but you want to be able to show that impact on the organization's processes on the outcomes of that of, of what of the work that you do also, you need to data to prove that 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 it actually happened and how it happened, and to be able to measure how uh, the the impact itself. So you you establish your goals, you, you set your metrics, uh, your factors, and you collect your your beginning uh, the begin at the beginning of the project. You you start collecting information, then you do the 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 the, um, the the changes and you can you can see the if it improves or not and also be able to establish cause effect relationships in in a, in a, in a sustained way so this is also something that need to keep going and we are here talking about quality and what it means for us is that quality never stops and uh, we don't implement a, a framework or, or, or we don't implement a, um, a standard or, or follow a guide, guideline and then stop there. We are continuously trying to uh, make sure we document how we are doing stuff, stop, continue to measure, get information on, on, on the changes and continuously improving. And that's what moves us in this area. Uh, at least that's what I think. And another thing that is very important is to share these uh, these uh, these results, share these uh, procedures, um, not only on at at the the organization itself, but you can imagine if an individual does an improvement and then it shares with its organization is already making a, an impact in the organization. 
even if business units may be impacting the entire organization or even organizations may be impacting communities. So this is quite, uh, um, the way we make an impact on others may be uh, it's something that is going out of our niche or our, our ecosystem where the, where the change occurred and um, reach other levels. So people who may be nominated may be self-nominated or nominated by others um, that did a remarkable work in this area. It may be an individual, as I was talking about, a group, an entire organization, or even a service provider. And let me explain you here something. So when we are using this service provider nomination, that means that if an organization is helping another to implement process, improve, uh, process improvement that uh, leads to a better software quality, um, the service provider is making an impact on that organization. So he is the one being nominated. And that, that's quite in, an interesting thing, for, thing an important recognition for, for people who are helping other organizations do this kind of work of improving their processes. So we are not forgetting them. But then again, this is not only about the, the, the industry. This is also about academic work. So people working and doing research also have impact on others and, and, and do improvements that are relevant to their experiments uh, and share their knowledge with the world. So they are making something with the purpose of serving uh, uh, other people. Uh, in my case, for example, I was doing my work with the intention of helping other people not overcome the issues that we met. And there was a lot of information of of how things always go well and all metrics are good, but no information, not, no, not so much information about what can go wrong and how can we overcome and avoid those issues. So in terms of nominations, as I told you, you can nominate yourself or other people. The nomination must be seconded by a, by a senior executive of the software organization. Um, and uh, there is a two page uh, um, description about the nature of the, the, the achievement that I'm going to talk about in a little bit with a little bit more detail uh, uh, later. Um, in terms of, of conditions, what do we have? Uh, we are going to receive information and this information for at the nomination time cannot be confidential. It is provided to us for us to evaluate, so it's not classified as confidential data. data. Um, then if necessary, we will ask for, for additional information. And in that case, if there is a, a, a confidentiality issues, they must be uh, clarified straight away. Um, also, um, it, it, it's important to know that the person or the award or group uh, will be aware that there must be a presentation done at the conference and someone will have to receive the award in, in person. Um, there is, it is necessary to publish an SEI re, a technical report following the standards that the Software Engineering Institute has for the technical reports. And you may have read some of them, you know, they are very uh, well structured, organized and, and sustained with, uh, with, uh, uh, with data. So um, this is important to know. Um, and um, there may be visitors visits by the committee members if required uh, to, to you know, further investigate, investigate or interview people uh, or see more about, the, about what was done. Uh, and these expenses are, are reimbursed by the recipient organization. Uh, this is also the advantage of having uh, the, nomina the, the nomination committee spread around the world because we get closer to the people that are submitting and avoid uh, higher costs. Um, also, you have to be aware that the, the, the members of the subcommittee uh, are not required to, 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 to you know, return the, the material that they ask for additional information. 
of course, if it is confidential, it will not. It, uh, that material will not be talked about. It's just for 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 internal uh, evaluation only. So these pages, two pages submission material is very important, and you keep in mind that you don't have to tell a whole story. Uh, you have to be able to summarize the important information that must be on that on those two pages. Okay, so that's why the, you have to know what you have to put in in, the, in these two pages: the nominee, target organization, the relation between them. Remember the the services that uh, the service providers, for example. Then have one to three individuals to represent your organization. This is important uh, um, because people are not always available to 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 or or maybe not available to to respond to questions or or to help out um, there must be a point of contact for for interactions in case of having more than one organization involved both organizations need to have points of contact um, you have to provide the goals and and the process improvement itself so what did you want to achieve uh, and what was the changes that we did in order to uh, improve the, the quality of, of and, and the outcome. Um, then you have to have uh, a little bit of information and you choose here uh, wisely, what can show the evidence of the positive uh, effect on the target. Uh, the the direct impact that it, it had on the on the result and its significance, uh, how big it was, uh, also uh, the the impact on the community at large. Uh, when you are, for example, uh, publishing on a blog, what 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 improvements you did? This is something that co companies do nowadays more often oftenly, and uh, and this is also having in, impact on the community because people may know. Oh, to to improve uh, the I don't know uh, the the loading time of a web page. Somebody used this technique, and this is amazing. I can do that in my organization as well. So this is one form of impacting others, but there are many others. Um, then you will have a chance to submit information that will help you us understand what you did. Uh, graphics, uh, graphs. Uh, uh, tables, um, any kind of, of surveys you may have done, all information that help us understand in, 10 page, in those 10 pages to sustain these two pages of the submission material. This is where you can give us more uh, flavor about the story um, and, uh, and uh, more substance to, to, to be, to be to, share, to, to let us know that you are eligible for, for, the, for the, the, the prize. Now let's pay attention to the schedule. Here are some important dates. Uh, the deadline for no nomination is already announced everywhere. So it's the 1st of September, and then we are starting to begin our, our reviews. Uh, and then we'll have a time uh, to ask for for our nominees or, or, or prospect nominees um, additional information if we need, or uh, may su uh, already suggest people what they may do to imp improve their job work and do a future submission if the work is not yet uh, at uh, at a state that that allows us to, to give the prize this year. So around November, we are going to do the recommendations um, to, to the IEEE Computer Society and Software Engineering Institute for them uh, to make a decision. And uh, in January, uh, we will have the awards announcement and everyone will get to know if they got uh, the nomination or not. So if they are, uh, uh, sorry, if they are the winners or not of the prize, uh, and um, so by then uh, they they will have double information if if they have suggestions also for future submission if there is hope for the next year. Uh, around spring, uh, it will be um, scheduled the presentation where the award will be given. 
and the person will talk about the, what they did and, and receive the, the prize. Uh, and then between January and June, we'll be there to help you um, to prepare the, soft, the, the, the report in the Software Engineering Institute uh, format to be, to be made available public, publicly. So uh, in 2020, we had a, uh, I hope I'd say his name correctly, uh, Rajendra Parasad. Uh, uh, he did a global automation at, uh, at, um, at Accenture. He was actually the global automation lead. And um, the, I provide here the link for, for the technical report that he, were, uh, that he wrote and the post podcast that was done to, to talk with him about the, the prize that he, that he won. So this was um, a five-year journey that they did to, to transform software development and, um, and the way they, 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 they delivered software to have intelligent automation and intelligent technology assets. This is like an end-to-end -end automation framework with the practices, technology, and, and, and it is used across Accenture. Um, so the challenge was to uh, implement something that was ready for the changes that we will have in the markets in the future, um, and uh, be able to to do to be more mature and do automation throughout the software engineering life life cycle. And this is at speed and scale. So imagine this kind of framework is already giving you what what you need when you have to to achieve a, a maturity level five. In a, in a quite, uh, um, um, you know, automatic way. Uh, this will also re help realize the, the potential of automation and, and bring value to businesses. It's, it's like uh, the, the, the machine and the software becomes a, um, an extension of the human and the human capabilities are extended uh, in a collaboration that allows to, to, to reach a different level of capability that you, we wouldn't be able to have on our own. So to, to end this, this, this conversation, uh, I just have to quote Watts Humphrey here and challenge you to, to think about what you did and the work you have done and think about the people you know and the work they have done and uh, never say I can't say I can and submit your, your nominations for this award. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, your attention. I'm, I'm, I'm here to, to help answer your questions. So feel free to unmute and ask your questions or you know, feel free to chat them. Use the chat window and we can answer any questions out there. I just want to make one or two points of clarification. One, um, instead of presenting at a conference, we sort of have changes uh, uh, in the COVID era. And so now the winners typically do a webinar. Okay. Um, just because um, a lot of the conferences, it's just not a sure thing they're going to happen anymore. And we feel like a webinar reaches more people. And secondly, um, the award presentation is given in conjunction with the IEEE CS Awards. So um, because we don't go to a conference and do an award presentation, we now have just joined the IEEE Award Celebration. So um, they've been doing it virtually recently, but I think they're getting back to doing it in person. So mm -hmm. thank you for the clarification, Julia. Oh, no problem. And I also want to recognize Fernando. Um, he is also on the committee as well. So, and he's been on it for several years now. So congratulations, Fernando. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So any other questions? Um, um, I, uh, any? Yes, I think, please. Yes, please. Uh, Isabel, you, you mentioned some hyperlinks on the, your slides. Would you be able to post those in the chat or make um, them available? I can post those on the chat, but my idea was to, to share the PDF and the, the, they are clickable. I'm not sure Great. if I can write ahead, I, I can post them on the chat. But when I close the presentation, I'll try to do that if you want me to, please. Whichever way it works. Okay. Thank you. I'll, I'll do it. One Thank other you. thing I'd like to point out as well is that when um, the winner does a technical report, there's a lot of support from the SEI in developing that report. So um, that's something that the committee and the SEI editorial staff 
um, spend a lot of time working with the winner to, to do that report because writing an SEI technical report is a pretty big undertaking. It's, it's um, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're long lasting and they're, they go through a lot of review. So um, if you do nominate yourself or if there's someone you're interested in nominating, let them know that they will have help with the webinar slides and with the writing of the technical report. One other thing I'll point out too, that was unusual, like so um, when Rajan won, he was the first individual to win the award. Um, and so like the award has always been advertised as open to an individual, a team or an organization, but that was the first time since 1994 that the award actually went to an individual. So that was pretty exciting for us. That's a great, a great point. And I didn't know about that. Yeah. Quite an honor, let's yeah. say. So the, the deadline is coming up soon. And there's um, a lot of materials that you can send out to people that you think might be interested. We can ask um, David Tuma to include maybe links to some of that stuff um, in the meeting minutes. Uh, there's uh, some flyers or links to videos and things like that. Um, but if you know of anybody, we really want to encourage you to you know, really encourage people to submit because as I said, it's so important in our industry to recognize people that are striving for high software quality in these software intensive systems. So I, I can't think of anything more important that we need to be working on. Mm -hmm. And I can also uh, tell you that at least one nomination and I'm, I'm aware it's going, it's coming from Portugal. I'm quite happy about that because I was only able to give a talk in Portugal and I was hoping to give more than one. And um, there is a group already preparing their self-nomination and they are also thinking about nominating some people from Brazil as well, did that excellent work as well. So um, I'm seeing some people moving and, and that, that gets me really happy because it's paying off the work yeah. we have. Done. And I really want to thank Isabel for all of her hard work. She has done a tremendous amount of work promoting this and making people aware of the award and what's involved in the nomination process. So we really thank her. And having this recording on the C website, I think, is also a really great ask, asset for um, this award. 